Hello everybody, welcome to our online service. It's such a privilege to spend this time with you. It's such a blessing to connect with you even though it's not face to face. I really appreciate this time and I'm thankful for you connecting with us today and tuning in. Um, I hope you've been doing well and I uh, trust you are flourishing in what God has prepared for you in this season. We've been doing great. The children are settling into this new rhythm. Although we had a disaster the other day, our, our swing broke and uh, we had to make some emergency repairs to get things sorted out as that was a priority. Uh, but what a blessing to be here together and to get into the Word. Uh, I just want to pray for us as we get started. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Word that is living and powerful that your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you, Lord, that your word comes and divides between soul and spirit, Lord. And this, 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 um, this day, Lord, we submit ourselves to your word, and we trust, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us as our teacher. And we ask that you would come and lead us into truth, Lord, that you would come and draw us closer to you, Lord. That's our desire, is to know you more and to, to have a greater revelation of your, of your love, a greater revelation of who you are, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this, my title today is, is Leading in a Storm. And uh, I, wanna, I don't want to be too long, and I trust this is going to mean something to you. But uh, it's interesting how in life today, the society we live in, the leader is seen as a very, in a very specific way. And many of us out there, myself included, for, for a long time at least, I uh, didn't think of myself as a, as a leader, especially as a, as a younger believer. Um, but I believe that each of us in Christ are called to lead in some way or another. In fact, if we think about it, Jesus being the ultimate uh, servant leader, the ultimate example of what it means to lead. If we follow him, if we emulate him, if we follow in his way, Surely that's gonna it's gonna show that we are servant leaders in the same way. Obviously, there's other ways that we what we leave when we're following Christ. We we are called to lead people to Christ. We are called to to say, listen, I've taken these steps. Don't you wanna don't you wanna follow and, and, and take these same steps? We are called, we, you know, scripture says we've been given the the ministry of reconciliation. And that in itself is an amazing way that we can lead people to be reconciled to God. So this this morning, or this, today, I want to specifically focus on one or two aspects of what it means to lead. And, and even if you haven't thought of yourself as a leader, I want, to, I want you to, to take notice what, what the Scripture says about you and about me. And, um, you know, if we're following the example of Christ, leading often is, is not a, at all what the world says it is. Christ led by laying down His life for us. Christ led by serving, Christ led, as I mentioned now, by reconciling humanity to God. And uh, so that's the incredible example we have now. Um, and to this morning, I, I, I'm going to focus specifically on the, the way that we as, as parents and dads specifically lead. I'm going to look at that a little bit. But I do believe it's going to be a blessing to anybody that's, um, that's a believer in following Christ. I want to read from Isaiah 43 briefly. Isaiah 43 from verse 1. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and who you formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Uh, well-known scripture, but still one of my favorites, and I believe it's so true for us today. And I want to encourage you that in a season where there's many that are just into in going into survival mode, I just want to you know get through this. I believe God is calling us to lead people in in the in the way of peace that He has prepared. He says, even the greatest calamities, He's with us. We will not be over 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 you know covered with water. We will not be burnt. Even the greatest calamities that come across our way, we are protected. And I believe that in that, in that there's a blessing for us to lead others into that same way of peace. And I want us to look at a few aspects around that this morning. 
And uh, in terms of you know, us as dads and as parents leading our families, it's 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 not a small task, guys. Let's be honest. I I'm so often challenged by the realities that and the challenges that face us as parents and as dads. And to be honest, I, I'm, I'm, I'm often aware that there's, a, there's an enemy of my soul that comes against me, trying to convince me that I'm no good as a dad, that I'm no good as a husband. So even with all the normal challenges, we have this accuser that's also ministering to us. And in terms of, um, and when we look at examples in Scripture, even there we see great men of God that struggled in this area. We see men like, like Jacob who who had a bunch of sons and, and, and they actually sold one of their brothers into <laughs> slavery. You know, that was, that was hectic. Um, God used it for his purpose. We see a guy like Eli, wonderful man of God who discipled Samuel, one of the great prophets. He, couldn't, he was struggling to disciple his own sons. And obviously we know that even King David was struggling to you know, raise up his own sons. So I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning these examples to say, guys, we need to be depending on God and trusting Him for His great wisdom and His great empowerment. And that's a little bit what I want to talk about this morning, is how God empowers us to lead, not only as dad, but in life. Now, um, the role of a dad um, is an interesting one. The role of a husband and a father and a dad is not one that is, that is assigned by virtue of of uh, your skill at it, or by virtue of your um, competency in this field, often you know, and that's that's often where the enemy comes at us. He says to you, "You're not competent, and you're not good in this thing," and he comes and accuses us in that very area. But your role as a father, as a husband, as a dad is not one that's assigned to you because you're competent. It's assigned to you by God. It's an anointing that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's, a, it's an office that we fulfill in the Spirit, the role that we receive from God. So this role that we are assigned is not because we're competent or not. It's bec- it's a, it's a, and, and that's where the enemy lies at us. And I want to encourage you to, to as, as we're speaking now, to trust the Holy Spirit. To, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to point out some of those lies in our hearts. That those lies that say... You're not a good enough dad, or you're no good as a father or a husband, or you're falling short. You're not measuring up to the bar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm trusting for the Holy Spirit to, to show us in our hearts where we've been listening to lies like that. I mean, and we'll pray for those at the end. Okay. And uh, I specifically felt there's some of us that that feel that because of our failings of the past, of things that we've gone wrong. We feel disqualified and we feel as if we, we, we can't be good dads, even if we did our best from now on. And I just want to expose that lie of the enemy and say, God has qualified us by the blood of his son and his grace abounds toward us as we take a hold of this, this what he entrusts into our hands, this, this, great, um, this great gift that he entrusts into our hands to steward this, our families, our marriages. Uh, in terms of us as husbands leading, there's a couple of things I want to mention. Um, firstly, as husbands and wives and children in a family, the first and foremost thing is that all of us submit to Jesus Christ as number one first. This is the person that everybody submits to. Amen. Before we start about talking about roles and and order in the, in the family. We all submit to Jesus Christ. We all submit to the Lordship of Jesus in our lives. And that, in it, it, as a starting point, actually makes things a lot easier. Because from that point, we can then sit, to choose as a family to submit to the order that Jesus has put in place, that God has put in place for the family. What a blessing. Now, I don't have a lot of time on, to spend on that, but I want to mention just to say that a dad and a father, as he's, you know, his role is to emulate Christ, to lay down his life on, for, the, for his family, for his children, for his wife, to serve them in, that sim, in a similar way. And that can, is, can never be a problem to submit to, to that kind of leader that emulates Christ. And, um, so basically, in, in a very, in sh- very shortly, 
a father takes the initiative to make sure that every member of his family is walking in the fullness of God's purpose and will for their lives. He, he's, he takes the initiative to ensure that each member of the family is doing the will of God as much as possible. And he's, and he's benevolently encouraging and supporting and leading in a way that each member of the family can flourish in all that God has created them to be. Um, and you as husbands, we follow that example of Christ. Um, we, we need to maintain a strong connection to Him. And, and very, I want to encourage you with this, to, for us to be proactive in our role as dads and in, in leading our family. The enemy is throwing stuff at us to paralyze us, to, to cause us to stay up, to, to, to fall into apathy and, and just not do anything. But I want to encourage us that we can be proactive as God empowers us. And I want to um, focus on that just in a moment. I want to just point something out that I don't I feel that often we as dads, we, or as fathers, we are, we, we are aware of the role as prov- of provider that God has given us. But we get stuck there. Yes, yes, God has given us the role of provider. But it doesn't stop there. There's so much more. God has called us to lead. He's called us to to be a protector and an encourager. He's called us to so much. And uh, and don't just get stuck on, on the provider bit. Okay, I want to encourage you with that. Okay, let's look at a couple of things, how God empowers us to lead, not only as dad, but in life. Firstly, God empowers us to lead um, and serve where we are. He empowers us by the Word. And this is, We've just been praying through that now before the message, and I was so encouraged again that God has given us His God-breathed Word. It's alive. It's it's as relevant today as it was thousands of years ago, and it speaks into our very situation right now. And I want to encourage you dads and fathers and husbands, lead in the Word. Immerse yourself in the Word and, and lead in a place that your family Come to that you as a family love the word and spend time in the word together. I want to quickly look at two scriptures around that very briefly. Oh my hand, we're going to get full, yeah. Let's look at Second um, Timothy three, verse sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Wow, that inspires me, the scripture, to want to just make sure that we as a family are immersed in the scripture. Amen. And then I want to read from another bit of Timothy from the, in the ESV. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given to you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Wow, isn't that encouraging? Isn't that what we want to see happen in our families? That we want to see our families saved and flourishing in Christ. And obviously ourselves, we want to be following Him um, confidently and, 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 and in a way that we, we really flourish in what He has prepared us, but He has prepared for us. Now, in terms of Bible study together as a family, I just want to throw one or two points out here. When you're spending time in the Scripture together with your family, make it fun. Engage with the children. You know where they're at in terms of their age and what's appropriate for them. Make it fun. Engage. You know, sometimes what we do is we dress up. Most of the children dress up. We make you know let the let each be a different character in the story. And doesn't matter what age they are, they love this. And then we go big and we 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 act out a small part of the scripture that we've read together. But there's hundreds of ways we can do this. But make it fun. Make it applicable to them. Make it age appropriate look at the time you spend you know especially the little ones their attention span is very short but engage with them and look out for teaching moments just in your daily lives i found that that's so precious when something happens or we 
come across something or we're walking, you know, the, the children are, are so enjoying our time in the morning, just being able to get out the gates and going for a, a ride. Um, and even in those rides or, some, or walks, we see something and we, we can make a comment about it. We notice something and we make a, a clear connection and something that they can relate to. Amazing teaching moments that we can that we have daily. So make it fun, uh, keep it simple, and and look out for those teaching moments. Then, then secondly, let's uh, he's called us to lead in worship. To not only in terms of singing songs, but in the way we exalt ex- exalt God in everything we do. And I believe a key part of this is he's called us to lead in terms of how we seek the face of God, how we seek the Holy Spirit and relationship with him as a person, how we seek his presence together as a family. I was so encouraged the other night we were reading through over this time, obviously of Easter and then beyond, we were reading through about Pentecost as well. And... uh, I was so encouraged how hungry the children were to, to hear more and to read more about them, pray again and for greater infilling of the Spirit. And how they respond to that, I was so encouraged. What a blessing. And uh, I just went specifically, dads, in this time that, you know, some of us are working from home and it's really hectic. Make time to be still. Make time to seek His face. Make time to be quiet. And then make time together as a family. Maybe even just once a week, set an evening aside to beyond your, your just your daily scripture reading to spend a bit of study time together in the scripture, to seek um, God together and worship and trust the Holy Spirit to point out specific things in the Word. He's so faithful to to speak through our children to us as well. It's, it always encourages me. And then finally, to lead in prayer. I believe God is empowered us to he's opened a way for us he says come you can boldly come to the throne of grace he's opened that door for us through the blood of his son dads leaders whoever you are believers wherever you are placed lead in prayer pray for your situation pray for your community pray for your workplace pray for your family there are few things that are as powerful as a believer that is taking authority in the spirit, in the place that God has put you, in the relationship that has put you, in the family that has put you, in, as, in the community that has put you. There's, no, there's a few things as powerful as a believer that stands up in that place and says, Lord, I want to stand in the gap here. I want to represent you in this place. Talk to me. And I want to mention something that I say often to my children we joke with them, we say, why do you have two ears and one mouth? You know, shouldn't you be using them in that, in that, <laughs> in that kind of uh, um, priority in terms of you've got two, uh, listen twice as much as you speak. I want to say to us, shouldn't we be applying that also in the way we spend time with God? Shouldn't we be listening as, as you know, as, as at least listening at least as much as we are speaking when we are spending time with Him. So I want to encourage you. Maybe that's a word for somebody. Spend some time to hear, to listen to what He has to say. I want to close here, but I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you, wherever you have, God has put you, there's an anointing on your life to lead people to Him, to lead people to a place of peace, to lead people to, to a place where they don't have to be swayed this way and that way, in chaos and in confusion and in doubts and in fears. There's so much of that going around. And I want to quickly read a scripture that Pastor Philip mentioned this week that really encouraged me. Um, it's from um, also from Isaiah chapter 8 from verse 12. And it says, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that is pe- that this people call a conspiracy. Do not nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary um, for you. And it goes on like that. And I was so encouraged by this in this in this current time. I want to encourage you that we can lead in this way, not to be swayed this way and that way with what's going on all around us, but to keep our eyes fixed on him. 
He that empowers us to lead. He that, that goes before us. He that empowers us by His Word, by His Spirit, to, to fulfill His purposes in the earth. I mean, I, I want us to pray together. And as you're listening this morning, if you are joining us maybe for the first time, or if you, wherever you find yourself this morning, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you do not have peace and a, a confidence and assure, assurance of, of how you're going to spend eternity or what that looks like even, I want to invite you to pray as I pray now, to pray with me in, in your heart, to call on to God. He's, he's so eager to see you draw near to Him. He's opened the way for you. He's given His Son in your place. He's given, He sent Christ to die in your place and my place. He's taken His sins, our sins upon Himself. And I want to invite you to pray with us now. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank You that we can take this time in your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your peace. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you speak into every heart. I thank you, the Holy Spirit, that you expose the lies of the accuser, the lies of the enemy. Every lie that says that we do not qualify, every lie that wants to say, no, you're not a leader, or no, you're not a good dad, or you're a terrible husband, or you failed, we expose every lie. And we, at the same time, acknowledge, Lord, yes, that we do fail, and yes, we do make mistakes. But, Lord, that, that doesn't disqualify us to stand up and to walk in what you've prepared for us. Lord. And so this morning, we humble ourselves before you, Lord. We, we thank you that, you that you show us every lie, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, we take those lies captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, this morning for a new hope to rise in our hearts to, to keep on seeking your face, Lord, to keep on grabbing hold of the way that you have empowered us so that we can see your kingdom come, Lord, in our situation, in our families, in our marriages, in Jesus' name. Lord, and each of us this morning that are calling on your name for the first time, right now, Lord, we, I just want you to pray with me. We, Lord, I humble my heart before you. Come into my heart again. Lord. I give you my I give my whole life into your hands. I thank you, Lord, that you've sent your son Jesus in my place. I thank you that you, Lord Jesus, have taken my sin upon yourself. Right now I confess that I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and and I, I want to follow you as Savior and King, Lord. I want to follow you all the days of my life. I want to submit to you as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you. That today I can have assurance in my heart that, that you are my father and that I'm your child and that I have eternal life. Lord, we, we commit each one to you now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your word to be a good fruit in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. I want to really encourage you. If you've prayed with us for the first time this morning or maybe if you uh, especially if you if you have a desire for somebody to walk a road with you, maybe to connect with you, to give you a call, to uh, take a few first steps in the in a journey of faith, or even if you just have a prayer need and you want somebody to pray with you, please look in the description below the video. There's a link that you can follow just to have somebody contact you. I want to encourage you to do that. We'd love to get in contact with. Thank you. For get in contact with you. Thank you for your time this morning, today. God bless you and we'll chat soon. Thank you.